Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are discussing the scope of uh, the new regulations on foreign investments. Dinesh Kanabar, you briefly touched upon round tripping. I want to focus a little more on that. The restrictions put on the two-layer system subsidiary also under, uh, not under parent, under the foreign entity. So how feasible is the execution and will it spur more cross-border transactions as well as more flow, easier, smoother flow of money from India overseas? So, uh, as uh, Asilin mentioned in the passing earlier on, that really there were no regulations concerning round tripping. There were two simple provisions. One was the FAQ, uh, uh, where round tripping was sort of inverted to and was said as not permitted, number one. And number two, we had a situation on an interpretation that if there was an ODI and an F, uh, uh, FDI together with it, then that was regarded as not being a genuine business purpose because it constituted round tripping. That is how the entire concept of round tripping was sort of interpreted in practice. And there were a number of notices issued by enforcement directorate, and there were responses. And clearly, this was one big area where nobody knew what was the correct stand, etc. And everybody was worried about prosecution. I can also tell you, Nisha, that we have been dealing with practically a number of situations where transactions have not been consummated only because there was this fear of round tripping. Yes. We now have a specific provision to say that if there is an ODI accompanied by an FDI, that is absolutely permitted, subject to there being only two layers of subsidiary and no more. And I will come to that part earlier. But first and foremost, we are now looking at a situation where a round tripping has been expressly blessed. There's a question, of course, uh, which somebody posed to us uh, the other day to say that uh, would you actually set up a company overseas and that company has no activity but to make an investment in India, uh, I would doubt whether that is practicable because whether that such an investment by India into an overseas ODI could be regarded as a genuine business investment would be very much in doubt. But clearly the overhang that we had, that if you made an investment overseas and that entity had said 10%, 20%, something in India, something was flowing at a later point of time, etc. You never really had to worry. I mean, the number of things uh, lawyers and accountants have put creatively to, to sidestep round tripping is not even funny, and those things now maybe will be a thing of the past. Insofar as your question is concerned as to whether this is practicable, giving the layering which is uh, not permitted, I would think that you can go to a multi-layer situation. All that is required is that you now need to go to Reserve Bank of India if you have, for example, seven layers of subsidiary. And then the question is, why do those subsidiaries exist? What is happening out there? Is something that you need to explain to Reserve Bank of India. But once you have exorcised this ghost of round tripping, Reserve Bank should have really no objection to multiple layers so long as it is shown to be for a bona fide business purpose. So yes. the fact that there is just two layers of subsidiary would not really worry me too much. The fact that we are burying the ghost of uh, round tripping is a more and more welcome. That's very, very important clarity that you have given Dinesh Kanabar and also uh, bona fide uh, business um, you know, activity aspect and more layers can be explained to the regulators. Uh, Cyril Shroff, do you have a view on the round tripping uh, norms now? And do you think that this will spur more cross-border transactions and more ease of deal making? So if I can supplement what uh, Dinesh Pai said, uh, firstly, the most important thing is a, it's a big psychological step of removing the absolute bar or the taboo that was there on round tripping and actually bringing it into a more mainstream concept where it is allowed. Uh, so long as it is for you sort of you meet the conditions. And there's an interesting nuance also in the draft rules that were published last August, there was a connection with the, this being allowed so long as it was not undertaken to avoid or evade tax. And it's very significant that that has been dropped in the final rules. So it's an indication that they don't want to be subjective about it because what is avoidance of tax and evasion of tax would have been a 
uh, been a matter that would have been debated by experts all the way up to the Supreme Court. So they've taken away that subjectivity and made it more objective. If at all, you might have to go back to the RBI to get a clarification. But it's a bit more uh, black and white in yes. terms of what is allowed and not allowed. Yes. And then there's another interesting nuance. It talks of two layers of subsidiaries. But everything is not a subsidiary. Uh, you could have a minority stake uh, uh, as well. And I think it therefore opens up it's uh, what hits you in terms of two layers is only where it's a subsidiary. Whereas in the erstwhile FAQ-based regime, even a small, even one share was uh, counted as round tripping. Now that regime has gone and you t the standard now is much higher in terms of yes. uh, two layers of subsidiaries. So yes. from a structuring point of view, uh, this has opened up uh, a lot of uh, lot of possibilities, and thankfully, they stayed away from this very subjective area of it was not undertaken to avoid or evade tax because God That's knows right. what that means. That's right. Uh, round tripping has uh, has been has been uh, haunted by this whole tax evasion okay. fear. Yes, Cyril Shroff. No, nothing. You were. Yeah. So this is a very important clarity. And as both of you said, that this will evolve. At least uh, the guidelines are there. And it is not a bad word anymore. That's a very big thing coming in. Because in cross-border transactions... Activity is now a guideline test. So I think it's a, hmm. it's a, it's a much clearer. Maybe it's not completely unfuzzy. Yes, yes. But there is much more uh, clarity in terms of what are the no-go areas. Right. And also, uh, uh, Cyril Shroff, on IFSC, we have had several discussions on the scope and how it's going to get bigger. There needs to be more participation. There has been a lot of flexibility and relaxations made in IFSC-led financial services and, of course, with exclusion to bank as well as insurance. What's your view on that? So building on what uh, has been said already, I think uh, the changes in this in relation to IFSA are significant. What about, in what way? Firstly, I think it acknowledges expressly that it is like a foreign territory. Whereas, uh, as well, it was only IFSA claiming that it is a foreign territory. Now, India, so to speak, is recognizing that it is a foreign territory. As a result of which, uh, as a result of which it is possible to uh, now think about it as if it's a it's a separate kind of system, and mirror changes have been more made both on the IFSCA side as well as on the India side, so to speak, creating a much more liberal framework. And because it is kind of an India thing, uh, given it much more. Uh, lib for example, the 50% limit that applies uh, for outbound investment, 50% of network doesn't apply if it is in IFSC, even the round tripping framework, so to speak, doesn't apply. The two layer thing doesn't apply if it's an investment in IFSC as well. So I think it's a big boost, generally speaking, for IFSC. Uh, financial centers such as this uh, take decades to uh, really come up. And unless this kind of very enabling uh, and supportive uh, policy frameworks are there, it becomes more challenging. So I think, you know, more mm. power to IFSC on this. Hmm. Uh, they have a long journey ahead, but things like this are going to certainly help it. That's right. And uh, Dinesh Kanabar, you have any more uh, points to highlight which are broadly really game changers or add to what Cyril Shroff said? And I'm sure that both of you experts and ind industry at large are looking at certain clarifications, even though the document quite, was quite detailed in many technicalities and housekeeping rules. So first, just, just a quick uh, short word on IS, uh, IFSC because, uh, you know, we have this uh, uh, concept with China has been trying to talk about one country, two systems. In India, at least with uh, IFSC, we have one country, two systems. And, and as, as Cyril said, more power to uh, more such financials. And it is very, 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 very welcome. A number of other changes, uh, Nisha, uh, as, as Cyril again nicely articulated earlier, that apart from sixes, there are those fours and ones and twos. So take, for example, we have always had this challenge that if you make an investment overseas and you want to write it off because of losses, whatever, you could not write it off without the Reserve Bank of India permission. Now you are granted an automatic approval to write it off. If you have to restructure a company, there are permissions which is granted automatically. But if there are two years of losses continuously, then you can write down the value of your investment in the overseas company. 
uh, if you if you it's not a hundred percent subsidiary and the value of the investment is more than ten million dollars, then you can get a value to come and certify. What is the pro rata amount that you need to write off? Again, all of those very liberal sort of going back to say that yes, you can do things on your own. We trust you. You don't need to come to Reserve Bank for every single thing. So very, very, very welcome things. Your question as to what are the clarifications which one will need, and I think those will emerge. Uh, Nisha, I could I could put a few things, but it's too early. It's really when you start implementing, as you know, the regulatory power, the day-to-day -day regulations go to the authorized dealer. It's a question of what interpretation do authorized dealers take as as you start working on transactions and you start interpreting. And that's where the need for a number of clarifications will come. Uh, as, as for example, the point which you are making, uh, whether the overseas investing company will be regarded as financial services, not regarded. So some of those things will emerge over. Time. Yes, so some of them uh, we live and learn. Uh, Cyril Shroff, very quickly, I have 10 seconds. Top three clarifications required. I know legal heads have, have many aspects to really delve into in this. I have a long list and a short list. I'll go with the short list. Yeah, top uh, ones. Clarification required. Definition of control. Yes. Because a lot of consequences follow from yes. how control is defined because the ability to do or not do something. Yes. Second, definition of, of more clarity on definition between what are debt and non-debt instruments. Yes. For example, are optionally convertible instruments, warrants, redeemable debt. Where do they fall? Are they here or there? Yes. Uh, and also made non-interest uh, uh, free. Uh, so that's a big yeah. one, yes. And yeah, then you know, net worth, whether it's a group concept or an entity concept, yes. Uh, yes, uh, and one could take care of you that it's an entity concept, but that would defeat the purpose. I think the idea was yes. that it you uh, they will obviously have to be some rules as to aggregation, yes, uh, or in certain circumstances, but again, this is going to be a these big three one. definitions. I, I totally agree, they have been on top of and my one more, head. I think, what is yes. prohibited sector? They've added a new one on where linked to uh, Indian currency. Were they trying to catch crypto? I don't know. Uh, so, All right. uh, we, otherwise, it goes too broad, right? And I would add to that the concept of strategic sector, probably how yes. the industry really capitalizes on this uh, you know flexibility on the overall limit of uh, you know foreign investments that has been given to energy renewable energy that will be one thing that i will watch very carefully but thanks so much uh, Cyril Shroff as well as Dinesh Kanabar for joining in with all your insights in this very very uh, game changing new regulations on foreign investments but we live and learn it will evolve and we learn as it is getting implemented and executed with that it's a wrap on big deal thanks so much for tuning in.